I'm Sean Coleman of Touch Points Cuddles and Community, and I'm a platonic touch practitioner, also known as a professional cuddler. Okay, so today I want to talk about some of the reasons to have a professional cut, cuddling session or a platonic touch session. Now there are many, many reasons why you might want to do this, and today I want to talk about the three reasons that I'm personally most passionate about. They're things that like keep me doing this work. So I'll go through my list and then I'll circle back and talk about how these things are available within the cuddle sessions. And we'll talk about, um, you know, why these reasons matter, why we do this work to begin with. Okay. So number one is I can help you identify what it is that you really want. So number one, helping you identify what it is that you really want. Number two, help you identify what it is that you really don't want. What are the things that don't serve you, that you don't like, that you just kind of want to get rid of, you know, or that you don't want people to even ask you about anymore because you're just not interested in those things. And number three, Three, we're going to talk about boundaries, how to establish them and how to hold them firmly so that you can step into a new way of being in terms of the way that you communicate with friends, with loved ones, with employers, perhaps, so that you can know a new empowered way of existing in your world. And this is important for many reasons but one of the big reasons is because it can help you go from being too nice to being nice and that might seem like a subtle distinction to some folks or kind of unimportant to other folks but believe you me this is really really important people who are too nice often ignore their own boundaries ignore their own limits, ignore their own needs in order to support others, in order to care for others, in order to prioritize others in their lives. And there can be times when we really need to step up big time and help others, but it is also important that we consistently show ourselves love that we consistently take care of our needs, of our wants, of our, our desires. And so I want to help you have a clearer path to doing that. Okay, let's start back over at the beginning, number one. I wanna help you to identify the types of touch that you really want, to identify the things that you really want. Now, within the, um, the cuddle session or the platonic touch session, um, consent is going to be incredibly important. So instead of it being a situation where you might have most places in your life where you kind of like, if you're going over to cuddle with someone, you just kind of start cuddling or snuggling, um, consent is important. So you're going to ask, you know, you're going to ask, hey, would you like to share a hug? Or, hey, can I hold your hand? That type of thing. There might be some things that you've never asked before. For many of us, if we want to hold someone's hand, we just kind of reach our hand out and hope that they grab it, you know? Or if we want to hug someone, we just like open our arms and start coming in. Some people do that thing of like, I'm a hugger. Like they're basically just warning you that like a hug is coming your way. That is much more common in our society than asking, hey, would you like a hug? You know, so for that reason, I feel like it's incredibly important that we dial it back and really get in touch with what it is that we want and find the words to ask for it. Because for a lot of us, we don't have a lot of practice with that. So during a cuddle session, you'll have the opportunity to make some requests and I will model getting really clear on how to ask for things. So moving from, can, can I touch you? Or like, can, can I touch your shoulder? To, can I um, give you a firm shoulder massage? Can I also include your neck and your head in that massage? Things like that. You know, getting clearer around that communication um, instead of it being kind of vague, kind of open. 
so that we can very clearly identify the things that we want, clearly communicate that to others, and get in the practice of asking for that consent. Um, it also, like, while I model it for you, you then get to take that with you and model that for others. You know, if that's the thing that you want more of in your life, then you get to show others what that might look like so that they can start asking for your consent in that way as well. In a way that's not only asking for consent, but asking for informed consent because it's really clear the type of touch that you want. And it's not just like, do you want to cuddle? You know, which is like an okay way to ask. But like, again, a clear, better way might be something like, you know, would you like to spoon um, with me being the, the, the big spoon and you being the little spoon? And also, is it cool if I wrap my arm around you, like over the top of your arm right here? Um, is it cool if our legs, you know, are, are, are wrapped up in each other the way they, they appear to be going right now? You know, things like that, getting really clear on that communication and kind of checking in throughout. Okay, so number two is identifying the things that you really don't want. So for a lot of us, we haven't had a lot of space to identify the things that we don't want. And some of us have been told to just be polite, to be nice, to accept the request that we have been given from people, you know, to be flattered when people want to hug us, snuggle us, cuddle us, want to give us things, etc. But the reality of it is that all requests were not created equal. And there are times when we simply don't want what has been offered to us. And so in this space of the cuddle session, I will give you lots of physical and like emotional space so that you can identify the things that you truly want. And so you can identify the things that you truly don't want. I want to help you to get clear on those no's and to feel comfortable and confident saying no because it's important, you know? It seems strange, but even just like saying the word no repeatedly can help us to get more comfortable with it, can help us to feel more confident. And when we do it in spaces like cuddle sessions where the stakes feel a little bit higher because touch is so freaking complicated for a lot of us, then it really helps us to feel comfortable and confident doing it in high stakes spaces outside of cuddle sessions. You know, and I call it a high stakes space again because touch is involved, but at the same time, it is a safer space because you know that I'm professionally trained and that I'm committed to offering up sessions that are affirming and that allow you to speak your truth and that I will consistently honor that truth. Like that is a big part of what I do. And anyone who is a certified professional cuddler is going to offer you that same respect. I'm going to honor you in that same way. It's important. Now, one of the big ways that I help people to identify their no, especially if they've had a lot of um, trouble doing it in the past, is to look into embodied consent. Now, this idea of embodied consent is one that I bring up quite a bit because I feel like it's incredibly important. For most of us, we've been taught throughout our lives to kind of just ignore our bodies. When we feel like that ick or that like, uh, that hesitant feeling, that uncertainty around doing something, we often are told like, it's okay, or just be nice, help your brother. You know, things like that are things that we have been taught um, in a very tangible, clear way consistently in our lives. And so in being taught that, we've been also taught, of course, again, to ignore our nose, to ignore those signals that our bodies are sending us. So with embodied consent during a session, I would invite you to really notice those signs, those signals. I'll make requests around things like, you know, can I touch your hair? And invite you to just sit with it, to notice if your heart starts to beat a little bit faster, to notice if your shoulders sink down, 
to notice if your entire body starts to clench and maybe you start to move back a little bit. You know, to notice those clear signs of no and those clear signs of, yeah, I think I'm into it. You know, that your body sends you. The things that your body remembers will always exceed the things that your brain remembers. So I encourage you to really notice what's going on inside, what's happening, how is your breath changing from moment to moment so that you can identify what it is that you really want to say no to. So that you can stop saying yes out of habit, stop saying okay, sure, because you feel like you have to, and start really saying no when you need to say no. Also saying no when you just simply want to say no because it's important to honor yourself and it's important to identify when it is that you don't want the thing that you've been um, asked or requested to give. Cool. So the third and final thing is around boundaries. So we want to use that information that we now have around what it is that we want and like and the things especially that we don't want or don't like in order to establish boundaries that we can take with us out into the real world, that we can take with us into conversations around touch, but also conversations around our lives, around logistics, around feelings, around um, our space things like that, just so many things. Like boundaries are so important in every aspect of our lives. And so that's why I'm super passionate about this part.